Hey, it's Riley. So, I wanted to make a video about how I afforded top surgery. And if you haven't watched my other videos before, I got top surgery about three months ago with Dr. Wolf in Michigan, and I paid out of pocket. And if you have seen my videos, you probably have heard some of this information before, but I know that there's so many people out there who are struggling to be able to afford top surgery because it's not cheap by any means. Some people, of course, have health insurance and that helps them pay for most of it or at least part of it, but that was not an option for me. So I've pretty much been working in jobs the last few years that don't have access to health insurance. And I guess, of course, one way you can go about it is to purchase private health insurance, but because I'm, for the most part, a healthy individual that doesn't normally need to go to the doctor, I decided that that would be way too expensive to pay over time so that I could potentially cover my surgery with that health care. So I'm just going to tell you like a few of the things that I did and hopefully spark some ideas for you if you're trying to come up with some money because I know when you look at top surgery prices, they can range anywhere from like six to 12 grand, maybe more. It feels like it's not going to happen. And I'll tell you, I didn't know how it was going to happen for me. And it took a number of years. There was, you know, a lot of time where I felt really crap about my body and not being able to go and do, you know, schedule surgery right there was difficult. But I was able, once I really stuck to my goal of getting the money, I was able to probably get surgery, I think within about two years. So again, that's a really long amount of time. And of course, it's going to depend on the person but I just want to give kind of a realistic time frame for how long it took me. So the first thing that I did was I did a top surgery benefit drag show, talent show type of event. That's something that I had heard a little bit about people doing, and I have some experience organizing drag shows in the past, so I figured that was something that you know, I, I like being social. I like bringing in people and from the community. So I thought that'd be a great idea. So what I did for that was I was able to find a free venue in Kansas City. Fortunately, now it's shut down. But back then I was able to do that. And I am in quite a few uh, like LGBT and transgender Facebook groups. So once I had a date and I had a time of my event, I went ahead and just spread it over social media that I was looking for performers. And I had people who did drag and people who sang and I had a band play and just really any type of talent. And anybody who wanted to have the stage and they knew that, you know, there wasn't going to be any pay involved and, you know, that kind of thing. And I was, you know, I actually found quite a few people, people that didn't even know me. And it was really amazing that, you know, people would be willing to do this for me. So I created a lineup. Of course, I spread it all over Facebook. And I was able to charge a door admission. And I had a couple of my friends just work the door and I charged $10 at the door per person. And then of course, for every performer, there was a tip jar and the, you know, the drag performers put all their money in the tip jar. So, you know, again, I had, it took a couple months to come up with this idea, to spread it all over social media. And I was able to raise a little over a grand in that night, which was amazing. Um, so that was the first thing I did. The next thing I did was I just created a GoFundMe, except it wasn't a GoFundMe. It was through a different site because GoFundMe takes a percentage of your, you know, fundraiser and it goes right to the company. 
So I did it through a company that um, didn't do that. <laughs> so with that, you know, I think a lot of people put up GoFundMes and they just think that everyone's going to donate and you're going to be able to pay, you know, with just donations. Um, I had a lot of people that did donate, but they were mostly close family and friends. So I was able to make, I think, about 700 off of that. Um, and then the, I think the thing that made me the most money was that I sold t-shirts and I was able to work with a company, kind of like a small company that made the shirts and you bought them through their site. So like you didn't have to purchase them and then like go out and sell them and hope you like broke even, like everything was done through their site. So they sold them for $20 and I was able to get $10 for every shirt that I sold. You know, they only kept what they needed to make the shirts. And also they like, I didn't have to pay for any of the shipping. They sent all the shirts for me. So of course I broadcast that through like all of my Facebook and I sent it to like just a bunch of Facebook groups as well, like in the area. Some of the biggest ones that I sent it through were buy sell trade uh you know like these online garage sale type spaces and i just said like you know hey i'm riley this is what i my goal is trying to do and you would be surprised how many people wanted to buy those shirts i had some people that bought 10 you know when they see a good cause and that you're trying to work on something that you can't afford yourself a lot of people really do great things for you and that's what kind of blew me away is, you know, the other stuff was kind of more my inner circle, but selling these shirts, I think I sold a little, a little over 200. I think it was around 230 of these shirts. So I was able to make, um, $2,300 off of the t-shirts and most of the people that I sold them to, I've never met and they were just willing to be kind. Um, I also did buy some of the shirts for myself after I knew it was successful and I sold them at Pride and I sold them at my drag show. I basically walked around Pride asking if people if they wanted to buy them um, and yeah that was really great. So you know of course this company isn't around anymore unfortunately and you know but you can create something maybe you have a craft that you're you make or some kind of product that you can sell and if you can market it that you're using that money to pay for top surgery that really gets people more interested in your product and i would just say definitely utilize online spaces facebook groups that's where i broadcast all three of these fundraisers so that was basically it i saved about half of my uh top surgery costs doing those and then the other half I paid out of pocket myself um, and was able to afford my surgery with Dr. Wolf. Like I said, it took a couple years, but um, just, you know, be creative. I know some people take out loans and, you know, I personally don't think I would want to take out a loan because I already had loans for my student fees, you know, in college and that was a lot with interest, um, but everybody's you know, timeline is different. Maybe your dysphoria is really bad at the moment. So, sorry, this is kind of turning into a long thing, but I'm just saying, like, think outside the box. And if you have, like, a fundraiser you're working on right now, I'm happy to broadcast it for people because I have found so much success with mine, and I know I have a lot of people who would support other people's uh, fundraisers. So, yeah, be creative, and hopefully you'll get to that goal. Not hopefully, you will get to that goal. But um, that's all I got for this, uh, this video. Thanks for listening, and hopefully I have helped you in some way. All right, take care. Bye.